Hey, welcome to the show, everybody. This is the Farsi Show presented by MyBookie, mybookie.ag. Lovely to have you along for the ride. My name is Mark Farzetta. Hey, uh, Todd Harriman's is going to join the show, former Eagles offensive lineman, the Swiss Army knife for the Eagles offensive lineman uh, at the time that he played, tackle, guard, uh, both sides of the line, uh, both sides of the center. Amazing. He remembers the rookie, Jason Kelsey. And I've gotten to know Todd a little bit in his post-playing days. Awesome guy. And he really shed some light on the type of attitude Jason Kelsey had coming into the fray. And it's the exact type of attitude that if you're already a part of the fray, nobody likes. Nobody likes the young guy coming into the workplace just being like, yep, I don't care about past relationships you've had with anybody else on this team. I'm here to do this job no matter what. And I was going back and I was looking at some of the uh, centers that were here before Jason Kelsey in recent memory, like Hank Fraley and Jamal Jackson, of course. Uh, and um, I completely forgot Mike McGlynn existed. And that was the last starting center before the Jason Kelsey era began. And for a six round pick, normally, a coach won't be like, all right, guys, this is this guy's job now. Everybody play catch up with this sixth round rookie. That's like a first round draft pick. That's like a top 10 pick. You know what I'm saying? All right, everyone get used to it. This this guy's the starter. From what Todd Harriman tells us, among many things, is it was Kelsey's job. Howard Mudd was like, everyone get used to this guy because this is it. This is the guy now. And like, this guy, Jason, this, this tiny little, this twerp, you know, 13 years later, Hall of Fame career. It's just one of those things you'll never. And when we had Dave Zangaro on, one of the things I've talked about uh, in the past with Dave Zangaro is that Dave loves the combine. Dave loves OTAs. And he loves going up to those six round, seventh round picks, those undrafted guys and having those com- and having conversations, trying try to get to know them a little bit because those are the guys that haven't been highlighted nearly as much as the first, second, third round picks and all that stuff. So he loves going up and having those conversations because, in Dave's words, you never know who's going to be that Jason Peters guy. Undrafted, Hall of Fame, you know? You're never, you're never going to have that guy. So you never, you never know who's going to be that guy. And Jason Kelsey is certainly a, a reminder of that. And apparently he came in and Howard Mudd was like, yeah, this is your new center. Everybody get used to it. Uh, but uh, Todd Harriman you know, talks about making the transition for guys that have to go from tackle to guard, like Tyler Steen's going to have to do. Uh, talks about the difficulty for the rest of the offensive line with somebody else calling the signals, like Cam Jurgens is going to have in the upcoming season. And he also talks about Jason Kelsey. And one thing in particular, a uniform change, change that Jason Kelsey made that everyone else was like, that's stupid, and then everybody else did it. <laughs> so... Uh, I really enjoyed the conversation with Todd Harriman. It's always great whenever I get a chance to catch up. Real quick, just on Mike McGlynn, because I went in a little bit of a Mike McGlynn rabbit hole yesterday because I was like, wait, I forgot about this dude. And he actually caught on, played about six or seven years in the NFL, the Cardinals, I think. Um, but uh, one of the things I remember was Andy Reid came out and was like, Mike McGlynn's going to be a center for us. I was like, Mike McGlynn? I don't think he ever even played center. <laughs> so when he received word that he was going to be a center, he went into the backyard with his wife and had his wife uh, take snaps from him. The first person to take snaps from Mike McGlynn apparently was his wife. So there you go. That's say, you know, anything you got to do to get ready for the season. So we'll get into that conversation with uh, Todd Harriman's and all the great stuff he remembers, including getting a shout out for uh, 879. <laughs> uh, Thirsty Thursdays at 879. A bar that was open a whole six months because nobody paid for a drink. It got the biggest laugh of the press conference. Anyway, I played that cut for Todd Harriman, who was traveling. He did watch the speech, and he was traveling at the time. When I originally reached out to him, he was at Kennedy Space Center, touring it with his kid. Isn't that beautiful? I thought, Astronaut is an interesting post-career choice, but okay. Good for you, man. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll get into that conversation with Todd Harris. Your 76ers, ladies and gentlemen, laid an egg last night. A big old fat egg last night in South Philadelphia against the Memphis Grizzlies. They go into the fourth quarter up 12 points. And you're like, all right. No Tyrese Maxey. Still no Joel Embiid. Up 12 points against a... Desmond Bainless, uh, John Morantless, Memphis Grizzlies. 
and they find a way to blow a 12 point lead in the start of the fourth quarter. Uh, they only score 15 points in the fourth quarter to lose to the Memphis Grizzlies. And I, I swear, I, I had this thought while I was watching the fourth quarter because it's an it's a, it's a it's a normal thought during the fourth quarter of a game where you're more talented than barely in this case, but you're more talented than another team, and it's just that you're getting out hustled. You're a thousand percent just getting out hustled. I uh, it'll stick it out just to see what uh, they're going to be saying with the post game crew. Uh, and Mark Jackson says it right there, basically out hustled which is exactly what it was. I, I listened to Kelly Oubre, who actually led the team in scoring last night. Kelly Oubre, the same thing. It's just, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And that's what it looked like. Second chance point after second chance point after second chance point. Uh, Memphis Grizzlies getting offensive rebounds, getting the putbacks time and time again. Just plain and simple, got out hustled. And Kelly Oubre said it just like that after the game that their talent got out us. And you can't let that happen. Not when you're supposed to be fighting to avoid a play-in tournament like the Sixers are trying to avoid right now. Who knows? Hey, you know what? Maybe they're trying to make it into the play-in tournament. Get a couple more games for Joel and B to, you know, get back in a game shape for the rest of the playoffs. You know, maybe that's their maybe that's their hustle in all of this. I say that in jest, but uh, Maxi is still being evaluated, uh, still having what Nick Nurse described yesterday as very mild symptoms. So maybe Friday you get him back? We'll see. But when I saw that he was going to be missing the game again, um, Kyle Lowry was going to get a night off. It's like, all right, fellas, who's going to step up and who's going to play well for this team? Uh, who's going to get it going for this uh, 10-9-8-76ers team? Because Tobias Harris had a nice little flash in the pan there with two games. And then not so much. Not so much at all. Uh, 18 points two nights ago, and last night came up small again on. I want to make sure I get it right. Three of 12 shooting for eight points. Tobias Harris in 35 minutes. No Embiid, no Maxi. No Embiid, Harris has to step up. No Embiid, no Maxi. Harris has to step up. Harris did not step up. Um, Paul Reed, 17 points, 11 boards in the game last night. Uh, Kelly Oubre led all score, led the uh, Sixers with uh, 25 points off the bench in uh, 34 minutes played. Overall, not great. Oubre also had uh, five turnovers, but he was also controlling the ball a lot of the ways. Um, so not great. Not great for those uh, Sixers last night. And how about this? On the board, Sixers out rebound them by nine. And on the offensive glass, uh, surprisingly, the Sixers actually won that battle. So, certainly didn't feel that way in the fourth in the fourth quarter. Um, Laravia, La Laravia uh, for the Grizzlies had five offensive boards, and I think they all came in the fourth quarter last night. He was one of the guys that every single time there was a crash to the basket, every single time there was a, a shot that went up from the perimeter. He was Johnny on the spot, making things happen for this team, for that team, for the Memphis Grizzlies, and the Sixers just couldn't do anything about it. And I know some people might be pissed off about the overturned block on Kelly Oubre with 12 seconds left to go in the game. Sixers were down four at the time, I believe. That's sour grapes, man. They had no business even being in that part of it because they got blown out in that fourth quarter. Excuse me, they scored 16 points in the fourth quarter. Outscored 34 to 16. And the 115 to 109 loss. Not great. Not great, to say the absolute least. Uh, one more thing to go back to the football world. Avante Maddox uh, getting released uh, by the Eagles. Uh, it looks like uh, he was going to get about $9 million uh, next season. It's going to save them about $2 million against the cap uh, this year. So it saves them, excuse me, it saves them $2 million of cap space this year. Uh, one thing I found interesting, both Adam Schefter hinted at this and Jeff McClain of the Inquirer hinted at this. Avante Maddox and the Eagles could work out a return if Avante Maddox doesn't catch on anywhere else, if he doesn't get an offer elsewhere. Avante Maddox, when healthy, is a pretty damn good corner. When he's healthy, when he's not fighting his way back from an injury, he's a pretty good corner. But he has missed way too much time. So Fifty-five games in ninety-five, uh, the last ninety-five capable or possible to play in. That ain't good, man. Can be versatile, not necessarily in terms of playing on the inside or outside. He's an inside guy, absolutely. Has played a little safety for the Eagles, especially in his rookie year in the NFL. Uh, in the early goings, was a bit of a playmaker. 
the one that really jumps out to me was the game they were losing in London six, seven years ago, and he actually stepped up and made a play. But uh, when he was on the field and he was healthy and wasn't coming back from an injury, which was the majority of his career, unfortunately, he was a pretty damn good quarter. Earned his contract. Talked a lot about how the uh, he was on this show talking about the importance of the cornerback position when in terms of the slot position. And played it really well, but far too often coming back from injury, far too often injured. Uh, I'd like to see him back, but as of right now, uh, you know, less money. And we talked about this when the when the offseason really began, about how the Eagles could save money. We talked about the possibility of uh, moving on from Kevin Byard. We talked about the possibility of moving on from Avate Maddox, and now this is where we're at. But as of right now, with the Eagles most likely drafting a corner, in the first round, and you already have Keely Ringo here, you already have Eli Ricks, and you want to see what Eli Ricks develops into, it's going to be a pretty packed secondary. I am also under the impression, especially after our conversation earlier in the week with Dave Zangaro of NBC Sports Philadelphia, I'm already under the impression that James Bradbury is not back. James Bradbury is not back next season. They're going to eat that money, and they're just going to deal with it, essentially. That's Dave's feeling on it. That's my feeling on it. And I know everyone was talking about, oh, my goodness. I know everybody was talking about Howie Roseman saying that this T, oh, you know, he's in our plans. <clears throat> he didn't say that. The question was, is he in your plans? Yeah, he's under contract. There is no more bare minimum thing. A general manager, a director of football operations, a player personnel, whatever. There's no more bare minimum thing to say than he's under contract. Thank you for that statement of fact. It reminded me. In all honesty, if Doug Peterson talking about uh, Sam Bradford right now, who's our starting court right now? Who's our starting court right now? Who's our starting court? Sam Bradford right now. Right now, Sam Bradford's our starting court. Okay. 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 They got a first round pick for Sam Bradford trading him to Minnesota. <clears throat> so, yeah. James Bradbury's under contract. He's not. I think he's played. He's played his last game for the Eagles. He's played his last game for the Eagles. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we get to our conversation with our friend Todd Harriman's, I want to uh, tell you guys about the great people at MyBookie. MyBookie.ag. Download the MyBookie app to your phone. Use promo code Farzy. That's promo code Farzy on the MyBookie app, and you get up to a thousand dollars redeemable cash bonus when you create an account. On my bookie, mybookie.ag. Want to bet on the world of basketball? Want to bet on the world of hockey? We're getting into what the Flyers did yesterday. We're going to get into that in a little bit. All that and more on the my bookie app. You can bet on it all. And if you're not into betting on the world of sports, maybe that's not your thing. You can bet on the world of television. You can also bet on the world of politics. All on the my bookie app. Download my bookie app to your phone. Use promo code FARS. You get up to a thousand dollars redeemable cash bonus at my bookie, mybookie.ag. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to uh, our friend, Mr. Todd Harriman's talk about all things Jason Kelsey and where the Eagles go from here after Jason Kelsey's retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, you know our next guest, uh, an 11-year veteran in the NFL, played alongside Jason Kelsey, of course, came to the Philadelphia Eagles in 2005, and uh, even got a shout-out uh, during Jason Kelsey's retirement speech, his former teammate right here, Mr. Todd Harriman's. What's going on there, uh, Todd Father? Oh, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. I appreciate you ha for having me on. Um, I don't know if it's the shout-out you want, you know, a, a failing business, but we're all here for memories, right? Yeah, right, for the, apparently it generated some good memories all right know. for it got the biggest laugh todd it got the <laughs> biggest laugh at the press conference for uh, some that had some chuckles along the way for it those that didn't feel see it's it. Like, it makes it feel like it's this underlying joke in philadelphia that nobody's <laughs> touched on yet and then jason you know classic in jason in jason style he's not scared to say anything <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, really, especially if you're Nick Foles. But anyway, we'll get there later. Uh, here's the moment where you and former teammate Brent Selleck uh, got the shout out during his his retirement. I won't forget Thirsty Thursdays at 879, a bar owned by Brent Selleck and Todd Harriman's that stayed open a whole six months because nobody paid for a drink. <laughs> Poor business practices indeed. That bar may have closed quickly but the friendships at Forge remain open to this day. I, I mean, it really is. It's a, I mean, I know it's a, a slight, you know, funny jab, whatever, but you, you were invited to be part of the uh, Amazon Prime documentary with Jason Kelsey. You were sitting there at the table when he's contemplating retirement. 
Um, what was it like to at least just be remembered for helping forge those memories and those friendships? Um, well, you know, I don't think that we necessarily started the bar with the idea that it was going to generate a lot of profit. I think it just sounded like a good time and uh, kind of a camaraderie, you know, building location, which it turned into, you know, we had a lot of fun, a lot of good times. And as Jason mentioned, a lot of good memories, very poor business practices. Uh, I, it was my only dabble in the restaurant game. I'm not going to ever touch it again. Um, <laughs> you know, there's certain people that have a lot of success in that industry and I'm not one of them. So, um, <laughs> but no, it's cool. You know, it's just, it's funny that, he, you know, that that's something that he would mention. Cause you know, like I said, not one of the memories that I probably would have brought up, but, uh, <laughs> this wasn't a speech about my memories and I'm glad that, you know, that could have a lasting effect on someone as, you know, who's probably the biggest celebrity in my phone now. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Listen, <laughs> when, it, when it comes to, um, watching the speech, I know you were traveling, you got to watch it a little bit later. What were some of your takeaways from hearing a friend of yours like that, you know, finally hang it up? Um, you know, Jason's just always so. I feel like he's he's very well spoken and authentic, especially as and he's thoughtful with his words. And you could tell that that wasn't something that you know. Obviously, he prepared for. It. He knew it was coming. Um, he's just such a good writer. Uh, he's he, I think he can get his emotions and words on paper very easy, and then able to read them to the world. I would love for him to write a book, um, but you know. If that was only a couple months of thought or maybe, you know, to, to put that speech together, imagine what kind of a speech he's going to have with five years, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty epic. Cause I know all of Philadelphia is going to invade Canton, Ohio, man. It's going to be, Absolutely. it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. Uh, you of course were there when he came in, you were a seasoned veteran by that time when he came into the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm just curious yeah. your, your early impressions of a very young, Six round pick, Jason Kelsey coming into the Novacare complex and also uh, Lehigh Valley. Well, it was a, to be honest, it was a, it was kind of a weird scenario for me. Um, I was really tight with Jamal and they kind of brought Kelsey in to fight Jamal for the spot. And, you know, Howard Mudd kind of had anointed, anointed Jason the, the next coming. Like, this is your guy. He's going to be your center for the next however long that you want him to be. Um, and he's going to be a cornerstone of your program. That's basically what Howard Mudd said. And, he was absolutely right. But, you know, when you hear those things coming into challenge, like one of your closest friends positions, it's a weird scenario. And so Jason was always like, you know, um, very authentic. Um, he doesn't really, he never kind of cowered or bent depending on who was talking to him type of thing. Uh, and he almost seemed like uh, a prick, like I'm here to do this job. You know, a lot of guys come in early and they want to make friends with the vets or they want to, you know, sit there and, and be well liked. And one thing I remember about Jason is it didn't really seem like he cared if he was well liked. He's like, I'm here for a job. I'm here to be really good and to have a long career. And that seemed like his mentality. And obviously, you know, he warmed up and and became great friends and, and stuff. And, you know, I've it was, uh, I don't think that it was unwarranted, the transition and center and stuff, you know, like everybody has their moment of, of being done and moving on and stuff. And there's always a new birth of new talent and stuff happened to me. Um, but it was just, uh, you know, it's, it's weird how I could develop such a close relationship with Jamal playing next to him for so long. And then also have the guy that comes in to replace him be just as close of a relationship with, you know, it's just, it's cool, you know, and, and that's the game of football. Um, there's so many, like Jason said in his speech, there's so many beautiful things about the game of football, you know. Is, is there a moment where you kind of bought into what Howard Mudd was selling as far as Jason Kelsey went? Like, okay, oh, now this is why I see the Eagles. This is why they need to make this change now and make him the center. Yeah, well, um, he was always very fast and gritty and gutty and very smart. Um, but yeah, like me, I was, uh, I was there with Juan and Juan was like, you know, I need huge offensive linemen. He just wanted big dudes. Juan always said mass kicks ass. And that was like his, his phrase, you know? Um, 
And when Jason came in, it was kind of contrary to that, that mindset, you know? And so it was kind of like, wow, is this really going to work? Cause he is very undersized, you know, he's a transition linebacker and, um, but he's fast, you know, does like fast and strength and power and agility make up for size and the offensive line and stuff. And, uh, that was a question and obviously it does, you know, he's a, he's a rare talent. Um, mm. And, you know, I text him after he decided to retire. I told him that it was an honor to play with him because, you know, uh, the development and, you know, in 2016, a lot of people were writing Jason off and he had that coming too. And I was out of here by then. I think that was maybe 15 or 16 was my last year. And, um, you know, he just put his foot down and said, no, I'm here to stay. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to turn this around and be a baller. And he rattled, rattled off eight, you know, consecutive, very impressive years. Um, it's just very impressive to watch and see happen and um, thankful to be part of it, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. as, as you get done playing and you look back, you know, you see guys that you played against and played with getting inducted into the hall and stuff like that. You just feel, <clears throat> I guess, very blessed to, you know, have been in their company, been able to play with them and share moments with them and, and you know, uh, yeah, it's just really cool to see it happen. Yeah, I, I, you surround yourself uh, with some fantastic people because a uh, mutual friend of ours here, uh, and also someone we both used to work with, you in a more physical capacity, uh, Trey Thomas and you. You guys have a great show now on YouTube, Between the Vines with Trey and Todd. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, sir. So uh, that was actually, I have to give credit where credit's due, Trey's idea. Um, oh, oh, Trey wanted actually, to be around wine? Shocker, right? <laughs> So Trey actually had this idea last season um, and we just didn't pull the trigger on it. And then, you know, obviously like the great planners we are, uh, started talking about it again after the season started this last year and decided to just get the wheels in motion and start, I think maybe three or four games in. And then, you know, we had our, our first season of Between the Vines where we traveled to local wineries, you know, checked out the process of how they made the wine, sampled their wine, talked to their, their winemakers or the grower or the owner, whoever wanted to talk to us. And then uh, chat football about the most recent game and stuff. Um, we were in the midst of trying to transition uh, into the offseason into something else. Uh, we decided that it's probably best for us to shut it down until maybe late April, and then we'll bring you season two with it. a little more organization, a little more thought. <laughs> um, looking forward to it, though. Maybe a little yeah. more funding would be great. <laughs> Copy that. I hear that. I hear that. Uh, well, it's great. I was watching a couple episodes. You guys had Landon Dickerson on. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm really sure I'll be checking out more of it. Um, when, it, when it comes to the transition that has to go on now with the Philadelphia Eagles offensive line, you mentioned Jamal Jackson, how close you were with that Eagles center. You came in, I think Hank Fraley was still the center. Yep. Mike Mag Mike McGlynn, I, no offense to him, for Big God he breeze. existed. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's it like for an offensive line, other than the, the personal aspect and the relationship there, what's it like for the offensive line to transition from one center to another? That's a good question. Um there there's a lot of differences i mean the game's the same the plays are all the same the calls are all the same and generally they're seeing the same things um some of them might see certain things quicker than others and stuff like that some people might want a lot of help from the tackles and guards echoing stuff um some guys are very vocal and they just handle it all but i think physically everybody plays different you know like kelsey was fast as shit. he stepped on my foot constantly um you know so that was another thing like i had to get a bigger split with Judge. i had to get further away from him before the start of the play um because he was so fast and you know as soon as he moves that ball he's going so uh sometimes i didn't get off the ball on time a little late sometimes you know uh and so he would step on my foot or something and you know you learn certain things like that um but more of the physical things like that you know uh fraley was um his feet weren't super quick and i didn't play a lot next to hank maybe a little bit in training camp and stuff but i was more of a tackle um also the silent count is a uh, different form you, you might have the same but you know kelsey's became kind of a, a fluid motion um to, to, as this career progressed and jamal's was a little more 
I guess you could see yeah, what's the word I'm looking for distinct um, where the end of his head motion was and the ball was going to be snapped and Jason's eh, a little more of a gray area, you know? Okay. Um, so there's just all sorts of like little nuances um, with different centers in the game like that. But essentially the offense is the same. The calls are the same. It's still football. Um, and yeah, I would say you just have to pick out the differences from each guy and, and you don't really learn that until you're playing right next to him, you know, and they step on your foot five or six times and you're like, wow, he's, he's really fast. Obviously that's Bro the thing. That's the one thing lingering in my head, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. He said, so damn, I gotta get faster on that. Um, well, another thing about that is, is like, I remember we all wore molded cleats, right? The, we called them the Cadillacs. They were big, chunky lineman shoes. They felt like, comfortable hiking boots you know and the, okay. the the cleats were molded rubber so they weren't like piercing um they were like mud what, what you would see guys wear in like a muddy game or whatever and receivers wear these cleats that are detachable like like pokey very pokey like very grippy you know and jason when he got in the nfl <laughs> put on these like uh you know uh detachable cleats uh, receiver cleats and stuff and like cleats that linebackers wear and stuff and we're just like Oh, what are you doing? You can't come out here with those on. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna break our toes, and you're gonna be stepping all over us. He's like, we better get the fuck out of the way because I'm not gonna change my shoes. This is how I play. This is how I play. So I was like, no. it's a new era. And then all of a sudden, I see Evan Mathis throwing them on, and then I'm sure, dude, I don't even know if anybody wears moldeds anymore. <laughs> wow, I never, I had never heard that. That is amazing. Sure. That, I, I can see why you wanted to change your, uh, well, your drop step so quickly. Well, yeah, the split. Uh, drop split, excuse all me. that yeah, yeah, yeah wow uh that's i never heard that before that's incredible uh for I, when you were when you were playing with the eagles one of the things you were always known for is that you could play multiple positions on the line of scrimmage uh very well at a very high level we have this guy now tyler steen the eagles have this guy tyler steen that was a tackle in college now he's going to be playing most likely he's going to be playing guard what advice would you give any young player coming into the nfl is going to be have, having to play multiple positions on the offensive line, even though he's going to have to step out of his natural comfort zone to tackle and move to the guard spot. Um, I mean, I, I would just tell him, like, if, if you want to be on the field, find a way to get on the field. And if it's at guard, get out there. If it's at, you know, uh, center, get out there and play that. You know, uh, if you want to get on the field and the coaches think that you got the ability, they'll find a way to get, out, get you out there. The thing I think is the hardest is – probably flipping from left to right um i don't think it's that hard moving from uh you know tackle to guard and then back out from guard to tackle and stuff i think most guys get either right-handed or left-handed as an offensive lineman um because colleges don't they don't flip sides uh i know when trey played at florida state they had a, a power side and a speed side and that's kind of how we ran our offense in in high school um, but once I got to college, there was a right side and a left side. And that's how most of the NFL, I'm pretty sure all of the NFL is like that. Um, but yeah, I, so there's not a lot of guys that work both staggers. Um, you know, it's kind of like trying to throw, if you're right-handed and you throw a baseball right-handed, it's like, okay, now throw it left-handed. You know, it's it's that kind of muscle memory or comfort or something like that. So uh, it's just a matter of doing it. You know, you could teach yourself to shoot a, an opposite hand free throw. It just takes a lot of work and a lot of practice. So I guess my advice to, you know, Steen or anybody else that's trying to play multiple positions is just stay after and make sure you're getting equal amount of reps in the opposite stance that you took that day in practice in the other in the stance that you're playing. A couple more points out. What has to do with the the end of the season here for the Eagles? I want to get to that and what your opinion is as to what happened. But also, Jason Kelsey, we know that Cam Jurgens is going to be taken over as the Eagles center now. But leadership position, they could also be down, according to reports, Fletcher Cox on the defensive side of the football. You were with the Eagles long enough where it seemed like there was a lot of regime change, if you will. There was a lot of leadership change, potentially, there or in your time there with the Eagles. What happens to a locker room? How do they – find the next leader how does the next leader emerge how does that go down when you're a player um well i think the way that you want it to happen is before you lose the bulk of your uh seniority leadership you kind of want your up-and-comers to naturally emerge uh it's not something you can force uh if you try to force somebody to do it it's gonna it's gonna be ingenuine 
Um, it's not going to feel right, and uh, Philly will sniff that out in a heartbeat. Um, but I think, you know, seeing the BG is going to come back, That's I think that's huge for the locker room and just having his presence. Um, losing Kelsey is going to be big. You know, it was going to be big anytime, not just because of who he is, but because of the position that he plays on the field center. He's been there forever. Um, and then just the knowledge that he brings onto the field. Uh, I think from what I hear, he's going to still be around quite a bit. So I think that he could still have, uh, you know, quite a bit of a, a leadership presence with those guys. He's very well respected in that locker room. I think it's probably going to be a good <laughs> 10, 15 years before uh, before the respect level starts to decrease or diminish at all, um, <laughs> if it does at all. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it's tough. It's natural. It's something that you just got to kind of figure out. But I think that they've got a solid foundation of guys. Um, Lane's still out there, you know. And also I think a big thing that has to do with that is – if you were making this, if Kelsey was retiring and they decided to get rid of Nick Sirianni this year, I think that that would be a way bigger deal. Um, you can't have all the disruptors happening at once. You know, they did, you know, get a new coordinator system in uh, with offense and defense. Um, but, you know, I, I think that that was warranted. It was needed. Um, but I think that if, if, if it all got swapped out and then these guys are retiring, it, it would have been it would have been tough for for the transition a lot harder but i think that they're i think they're in a good spot right now what is your opinion as to why the eagles and how the hell the eagles went from a 10 and 1 team number 1 seed nfc east in the back pocket to limping into the playoffs and then getting bounced out in the first round what the hell happened there todd harriman's well <laughs> i don't know that's a that's a, that's a million dollar question i mean I, I can't sit here and act like i have inside intel or i know mm -hmm. what exactly went down but you know, just from from watching it, we started out ten and one. Um, a lot of those wins weren't super decisive early. I mean, they were wins, and it's very heroic how it happened. And it was almost like they willed themselves to win, but it wasn't like, wow, that was an impressive win. We're just going to walk through this season, you know. And we're kind of waiting for that game to happen, and that game never really happened. And I think people got more caught up in the numbers than the actual product. So, um, and as the season goes on. I think that your weaknesses kind of get exploited. Um, other teams start to to dial it in and sharpen it up. And if you're not focusing on that stuff that might get covered up or brushed over because of your awesome record and, you know, heroic, you know, game ending wins and stuff like that. Uh, I think that, you know, it could be, uh, it, I think that that's kind of what happened. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it is it possible? Because I've heard all the everyone, Jason Kelsey, Fletcher Kai, pretty much everyone in the locker room talk about how much they love Nick Sirianni and he's a great coach and great leader and, and all that. Is, is it possible to really respect and, and love the hell out of a coach and then just not be able to dial it up at the end of the season like that? Like, unfortunately, like the rest of the season played out for him. It is. I think it is. It's totally possible. I mean. The guys that love Nick are and are coming out and swinging, you know, really to bat for him are the veterans. And he's a player's coach and he's been taking care of the veterans and veterans like to be taken care of, you know. <laughs> um, some of those rookies need a kick in the ass and they don't need a friend. They need a, a coach and, you know, some of the younger players, they need the guidance and they don't need a buddy. Um, some people can be their friend or their their buddy and also guide them it's a it's a it's tough to do uh jason's one of those people that can do that um i don't know i don't know if nick sirian is or not uh we'll see but he does have a an impressive record since he's been here you know you can't take that away from him he's been here what three years Three, three years, all uh, three well, years in the playoffs, all, all three years. Yeah. yeah. So like the success is there. You can't just say, oh, that's just because he was handed a great roster or anything like that. I, I, I think that there, you know, there's a lot of validity to his success. Um, and I don't think it's necessarily fair to completely say Sirianni should have been fired. You know. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I do want to make sure people are following you on social media, of course, at Todd Harriman's, of course, on uh, social media there. Uh, also making sure people are checking out. Uh, if you guys want to catch up on the action happening between the vines with Trey and Todd, make sure you're doing that. And then a little road trip for you. You were just at Kennedy Space Center. Apparently, you're going to be an astronaut now. Restaurant business, not so much. 
astronaut definitely happening. Oh, dude, I don't know. I'm way too claustrophobic. I can't even do the flight <laughs> simulators. I was, oh. trying tell, I was trying to tell my wife, look at my son. He's so nervous. He doesn't want to do this. And I think I was just kind of speaking for myself through him. <laughs> um, and, and your wife is the business person now. She's the mover and shaker. What's she, do, what's yeah. she up to? So uh, Elizabeth started a, uh, a real estate and lifestyle service business called Birds Nesting. Um, and the idea from this was when we moved to Indianapolis for my last season, uh, we didn't know anybody really in the community. It took a long time to settle in. By the time we got settled, I kind of got cut. Uh, and so we just felt like our time there could have been spent so much more enjoyable um, if there was somebody that would have found us a place to live, been like, look at here's all your great restaurants, here's the doctors if you need a doctor. So what she's doing is she started a, uh, a company called Birds and Nesting, and that's exactly it. She is a real estate agent, but on top of that, she will find you the right community, the right schools, the right doctors, and just get you plugged in to make the players, the coaches, be able to focus on the field and not have to come home and listen to their nagging significant other because they don't have any friends or a gym to go to or anything like that um but yeah it's uh it's awesome uh, i'm very proud of her she's been working really hard on it um and she's trying to dial that in for all of philadelphia athletes and executives so such, such a a sweet young lady she um i met her at the i think it was athletes for a cure i think it was the golf outing athletes for a cure yeah, yep, just, yep, yep, yep. just Awesome. You get both of you guys are great, obviously, but uh, that's awesome. Congratulations to Elizabeth. That's fantastic, man. Uh, absolutely, Todd. So great catching up with you, man. I look forward to a whole new season of Between the Vines with yeah, uh, Trey and Todd. I think we're coming either early May or late April. Fantastic, fantastic. Todd Harriman's, ladies and gentlemen, the Todd father himself. Make sure you're following him on all social media platforms. Make sure you guys subscribe right here on YouTube to Between the Vines with Trey and Todd. Great stuff uh, on your friend and former teammate, Jason Kelsey, as well. Todd Harriman's, ladies and gentlemen. Todd, thanks so much. No problem. How much fun was that, man? <clears throat> Great to catch up with uh, Todd Harriman. We haven't had him on the show in a while. I think the last time we had him on the show... Uh, was when he talked about the fight at training camp with Hugh Douglas. <laughs> now, Hugh teed it up, saying that Todd Harriman's is a rookie in 2005 was trying <laughs> to, you know, make his presence known, announce his presence with authority as a rookie should. And he and Hugh got in a little bit of a tussle, if you will. And I remember Hugh's line <laughs> was, if you're walking off the field, old man, take this with you. Boom! And that he, he now Hugh, the guy that was on the receiving end of the uh, tussle said Todd did exactly what he was supposed to do in that situation. In the football context, veteran and rookie, Todd Harriman did exactly what he was supposed to do. And Todd, the next day, was like, when I saw him, it was actually after I saw him, when I saw him next, was well, at that, that Athletes for a Cure. And Todd came on my show and he talked about it. And um, we were both laughing about it. He was just like, man, <laughs> you made me seem like a punk. <laughs> uh, but how about that? Going back on the Jason Kelsey stuff that he talked about, Jason Kelsey was, you know, what did he say? Some prick coming on the team, you know, I'm here to do a job. And look, that's exactly whether you're the number one overall pick or you're a sixth round pick, you're that's the attitude you're supposed to have, right? Isn't that what we want in our athletes? To have at least, at least, hey, I'm not here to be a backup, you know? No one's supposed to show up and be like, I am here to be your backup. No, you're supposed to want the job. Jason Kelsey wanted the job. I love that. They're marveling at how fast he was. And when you think back on it, for all the wonderful things I heard about Juan Castillo, that, you know, mass moves ass is a very common and uh, common thing people have said about Juan Castillo, <clears throat> Trey Thomas being one of them many times. One of those big guys. And then the transition to Howard Mudd was totally different in the Andy Reid era. Now, all of a sudden, this guy was going to want smaller, more nimble offensive linemen. What? Especially at the center position. What? And Jason Kelsey was out there flying around. And how about him stepping away from the Cadillacs, as Todd Harriman's put it, the big old bulky spikes, and Jason Kelsey walks out there in soccer cleats. No, 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 that's a bit of extreme, but he walks out there and things that are built for speed, not necessarily for comfort. 
<clears throat> and the amount of times he stepped on Todd Harriman's foot when Todd Harriman's was lined up at guard, getting ready to do his split. That is, um, that's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. There's little things like that, that only guys that played right there with Jason Kelsey can tell you about. Imagine being one of those more grizzled veterans on the offensive line. Imagine being one of those guys that came in here under Juan Castillo. You're ginormous. You're a ginormous human being. And all of a sudden, this, this wee fella, rookie out of Cincinnati, comes in. It's like, this is my job now. Look at me. I'm the captain. I'm the captain now. And I'm going to wear these little dainty spikes. And then Evan Mathis starts wearing them. And uh, Todd Harriman's, of course, everybody else as well. By the way, one one last thing, and Todd Harriman's reminded me of this. So I told you guys the story after Kelsey announced his retirement. This was Tuesday morning when I was doing the show. Um, told you about, you know, talking to Jason Kelsey his rookie year. I'm being like, this guy? Really? This, this, this is the guy? This is the guy? And But liking his personality. I was like, this guy's got a personality on him. You know, fans will love him if he develops into anything, you know. But then I remember I had to go there to shoot something. Uh, we were taping promos, I think it was. And I was there with Jason Kelsey. I was there in the room, and they were sending a whole bunch of people in. Uh, Jason Avat was one of them. I think I had just shaved my head, and Jason Avat's like, oh, you opened up the uh, the sunroof there, buddy. Yeah, me too. And they're like, oh, that's really cool. And then we had uh, Evan Mathis and Jason Kelsey walk in the room. These two, from what I remember in the early goings, were bosom buddies, like, boom, right out of the gate, besties, if you will, okay? And Jason Kelsey walks in, and he's like, Evan, how do you want to do this? Good cap, bad cop? And they were, like, standing back-to-back -back for the promo for a second. And it was like, okay, you lay it on him uh, real nice, and I'll be, the, I'll be the bad guy. And that's what Jason Kelsey said. I just remember thinking, this guy is every bit of a personality that I thought he would be. And then he turned out to be pretty damn good, pretty damn good as well. One last thing with Todd Harriman's and as far as what he remembered with, with Jason Kelsey was uh, you talk about a guy just stepping right into the role of leadership. And after I talked to uh, Todd Harriman's, I was on social media. This is last night. And I saw the clips on New Heights podcast of Jason Kelsey and Travis doing their show. And Travis is welling up with emotion and Jason is trying to fight it back, thinking he's done enough crying, I guess, for the week. And um, they said, "All right, let's roll the the salutes. Let's roll the, the let's roll all the congratulations on a great career, Jason Kelsey." And then up on the screen is Shaquille O'Neal, uh, the pa uh, Peyton and Eli Manning, Chris Long, Jordan Mailata, Jalen Hurts, Nick Foles. Loved the speech, to which Jason Kelsey said, I bet you did. By the way, it, uh, he also said on the podcast that they reached out to Nick Foles. He reached out to Nick Foles and his wife and be like, hey, can I talk about your parents? Like, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> they both approved, which is funny because I've heard in the uh, that Nick Foles does not like that moniker. He might be the only person on the planet that wouldn't want that moniker, but okay. Um, a whole bunch of guys, but one of the ones that really stuck out to me, oh, Jim Tomey. Jim Tomey was on there. Of course, longtime Cleveland Indian. Beloved still by the Cleveland Indians. And uh, Jason and Travis Kelsey, too, I'm sure. And they were free. Oh, Toby's on there. You know? uh, so he was wishing Jason Kelsey congrats on retirement, happy retirement, all that stuff. Uh, but one of them that really stuck out to me was Chris Long. Now, I've told you guys before, Chris Long is my favorite athlete to have ever covered. Hands down. And Chris Long uh, said, you're the first person that I ever, this was so telling. He told Jason Kelsey, you're the first person I ever played with that I looked up to who was younger than me. I think about that. Looking up to someone who is significantly younger than you. And at the time when Chris Long got here, had not won a championship. Jason Kelsey had not won a championship. Chris Long was obviously here the year they won the championship. And I, th I thought that was so incredibly telling of the personality and the leader that Jason Kelsey was and is. You know? You're the first person that was younger than me that I looked up to. Pretty incredible. Uh, and then a little nugget. A little nugget that if you really weren't paying attention... You might have missed it. 
Todd Harriman's. Did he let something slip? Did he let something slip? From what I'm hearing, Jason Kelsey won't be far away from that locker room. What? Come again? I, I Look, I, I put it out there when we had Olivia Reiner on the show a couple weeks ago, and she was talking about Jason Kelsey potentially when she interviewed him in Baltimore, the AFC, Champ AFC Championship game. Um, he had said he could be around it. He's like, if I'm not in it, I got to be around it. I never want to feel like an outsider when it comes to an overcare complex. Okay. All right, so what does that mean? And then I pointed out Connor Barwin, good friend of his. Connor Barwin helped uh, produce, or did produce, rather, the Jason Kelsey documentary on Amazon Prime. He's around the team. He's a special assistant. Jason Kelsey, potentially that, that, that kind of title. I, I wouldn't be shocked. If by OTAs rolled around, you had heard, oh, Jason Kelsey's back with the Eagles as an advisor to Howie Roseman or to the scouting department or whatever the case may be. I have already made my case that he should be a sports ambassador of Philadelphia. Should be a, 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 a an appointed position by the mayor <laughs> where any new athlete coming into Philadelphia, Jason Kelsey is right there to greet them and tell them, hey, look, here's the deal. You might have heard some stuff about Philadelphia. I'm here to tell you how it really is. I've told you, this is something that every team does in, in some capacity. They, hey, how do you answer a question about another player? Uh, you don't. You have to ask him. Hey, another player in a contract. That's not for me. That's for him. How do you answer questions? This is how you answer questions in Philadelphia. This is how, uh, if, if, if you get booed, how do you handle it? Yeah, I'd boo me too. Is the best response. It's the best possible response. Hey, how do you think about the fans booing you? I would have booed me too. That's the best thing you could say. It's even better than, uh, you know, fans can do what they want. Um, But yeah, T Todd Harriman's just letting a little, 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 little bit of a drop there that he could be around the team this year, which I don't think would be a big shock to anyone. Uh, look, I, I, people talk about the, the ESPN thing. They talk about being in the booth during a game. Jason Kelsey's got his podcast. He's got his family, young family. Uh, you don't want to be away from that, even if it is only, you know, on the weekends. Production means you got to sit on, sit in on, going up and back and forth to Bristol if it's an ESPN analyst gig. He's got that. He's got that. It's not like it used to be in this beautiful digital world that we live in now. Some people can just sit at home and do their job. <laughs> it's not a bad gig. It's not a bad gig. Imagine being Jason Kelsey. Uh, but my thanks to Todd Harriman's. All that great stuff, man. That was, that was pretty fantastic. Pretty fantastic. Um, before I get to our sponsors in the chat check, I want to reference Pro Football Focus. Pro Football Focus did a ranking of the top 101 players. Top 101 players from the 2023 season, this past football season. And what did you know? The day they put it out there was the day that Jason Kelsey decided to hang it up. And number 86 on the top 100, 101, excuse me, top 101 players in 2023 at number 86, ranking in at number 86 was Jason Kelsey. Now, since then, uh, one, two, three, four, four other installments of this have come out. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, Jalen Hurts ranked in at number 72 on this top 101 players of the 2023 season. Jalen Carter, well, hold on, uh, just for perspective, Jalen Hurts came in at 72. Matt Stafford came in at 58. Okay. Uh, at number 68, Jalen Carter was ranked in at number 68. Number 61, Lane Johnson at number 61. Lane Johnson, number 61. Jordan Mailata. Now, if Lane Johnson is at 61, where do you think Jordan Mailata ranked in? Lane Johnson, 61. Jordan Mailata, 42? I, I've got all the confidence in the world, and I really, I really, really like Jordan Mailata. But holy pots and pans, 42, that much higher than Lane Johnson. Good golly. Uh, and just for perspective, not necessarily with the uh, left tackle, excuse me, right left tackle position with Jordan Mailata. 
uh, a guy that's rumored to be attached to the Eagles here, a uh, guy that was under Vic Fangio with the Dolphins last year, a linebacker, Andrew Van Winkle. Ginkle, excuse me. Andrew was thinking of Fonzie. Uh, Andrew Van Ginkle was ranked in. Jordan Mailata at 42. Andrew Van Ginkle at 41. So top 41 players there as a linebacker, possibly coming to Philadelphia. <gasps> I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Let me tell you about the great people of the Game Time app. Hey, if you want to see Jalen Hurts, if you want to see Jalen Carter in the upcoming football season, if you want to go to a basketball game where potentially the Sixers might not mail it in at the end, like they did in the fourth quarter uh, of last night's game against Memphis, the Game Time app is where to do it. Go to the Game Time app, download it to your phone, create an account, use promo code FARZY on the Game Time app, and you'll get $20 off your first ticket purchase on the Game Time app. So download the Game Time app to your phone. Use promo code FARZY. Oh, and have yourself a good time. Plus, don't forget about the flash ticket deals, the last minute ticket deals. They even have ticket deals for an hour after the event starts. So you might miss the opening act. That's fine. You get mega huge Kajunga savings right there at the Game Time app. When you download the account, uh, download the uh, Game Time app to your phone, create an account, use promo code FARZY, get $20 off. And how about the Game, the game Time guarantee, ladies and gentlemen? When you download the app, and you find maybe tickets on another app or another site for less money, same section, same row for less money, Game Time will get you back 110% of the difference. That's a Game Time guarantee. How good is that? Plus, all in pricing, so you're never shocked and disappointed at the end. What is it? The service fee? They're $20. What are you talking about? No. Game Time app. Download to your phone, create an account, use promo code FARZ, get $20 off your first purchase on the Game Time app. Uh, so download to your phone. Have yourself some fun. Uh, how about the people at Sky Motor Cars? SkyMotorCars.com. Take advantage of all they have to offer at SkyMotorCars.com and check out the beautiful inventory they have with our friend Brett at SkyMotorCars.com. PHL Sports Nation, Philadelphia Sports Nation, enhancing your Philadelphia sports fan experience across all social media and blogs. That's PHLSportsNation.com. Let's get into the chat check and see how you wonderful people are doing on this fine Thursday morning. Wine Niners, wine. Good morning, Farzi. Hope you enjoyed your screenshot. <laughs> uh, uh, brought lots of laughs yesterday. Yes, I very much enjoyed it. Thank you for changing it. You know what? I didn't check. Is it still up there? That Xavier McKinney still uh, plays for the Farzies? It was that he played for the Hong, the Wong, Wong Dong, Wong Dong something of the NFL. Let's see here. No! American football safety, who is currently a free agent. Uh, it's fun while it lasted. Wine, Niners, wine. Thank you. Sean Gillespie, good morning. What's going on? Jason, good morning. Sean Gillespie. Howard Mudd, man. Jason Kelsey, as I think I'm, I might have told you guys this before, once referred to Howard Mudd as the most interesting man in the world. Mudd is the man for Kelsey. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Sean Kilrain. Sean Gillespie, Tobias is silently will silently step <laughs> step to out other teams, step up to out other teams. Okay, maybe to show off. Sean Kilrain, crumble cookie and no show. The door is slowly closing for them. Play in game. Here we come. That's what it seems like. Definitely a play in a tournament team. Game you shouldn't have lost. Yep, I concur against the Nets, and last night. <laughs> For those that didn't see the show Sky Drive, Vontae Max is on N'Kobe Dean. We didn't give N'Kobe Dean any um, scrapple, but he still got hurt. But yeah, Vontae Max tried scrapple for the first time on the show with me, and he liked it. Look at Avante, he likes it. Um, but yeah, great reference, Sean. Thank you, uh, Jason. Hey, April. Good morning, April. What's going on? Uh, Sean Gillespie, I can truly understand how all Vikings fans hate the Eagles, NFC Championship game, Super Bowl, and their brand new stadium in Sam Bradford. Sam Bradford. Avante, it's been real since Sean Kilrain. Ricks McPherson will be the new slot. Certainly seems like it. Sean Kilrain, <laughs> Scrapple is not for everyone. <laughs> uh, but, but, but Scrapple wasn't meant for Avante. Nothing beats a Scrapple. Ooh. Scrapple egg and cheese breakfast sandwich, you know. Scrapple egg and cheese, everything bagel, salt, pepper, ketchup, a little sriracha, a little sriracha. I'm in my happy place. I'm in my happy place. 
Twins, what's going on? Sean, is Jason Kelsey undersized? Incredible. Absolutely. Kill rate. Remember, mass kicks ass. What? Good morning, Farzi. Where the, what? Uh, oh, it's very nice, Joseph. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Todd Harriman's was an underrated, is an underrated eagle. 11 17, fire Sirianni. Yeah. How can we sustain a culture if we keep bringing in a bunch of mercenaries, rentals to plug holes left by draft misses? Well, I'll say this. Now it's going to be difficult. Before it was it that you had Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, J.C. Kelsey, Lane Johnson. The core four, if you will. Now the core four is down to two with Graham and Lane Johnson. That's no bueno. I think about that. That is no bueno. Yeah. Was Greg Ward on that champ? Was on the Super Bowl team? Was he a practice squad guy that year? I feel like he's he's too young. Uh, let me just check that out. I'm just gonna see if Greg Ward was. I don't think he was. That's my first. Yeah, no, he was not. He was 2019. Okay. By the way, one of the things that uh, that came out of that Stephen Nelson, Darius Slay interview was they both were talking about Greg Ward. Like, hey, this oh, everyone's sleeping on Greg Ward. Greg Ward's good. All right. Well, let's see him get that opportunity. <laughs> Kelsey retired. God is dead. Thank you. Ridiculous. Uh, Jay said, Harriman. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, Harriman's, Harriman's is great. Todd Harriman's is great. Um, I'm sure they approve of him saying that about uh, BND, uh, BDN. Damn right. New Heights episode with Chris Long and Bo Allen was fantastic. I got to go back and watch those. Makes sense. Both went to Cincinnati, him and Barwin. Yeah. Yeah. They're buds. Ooh, April. I'd boo me too. Definitely a better response than for who, for what. I remember that game, man. I remember thinking, he should have caught that. Oh, he was afraid of getting hit. And then for who, for what? Oh, baby. What a spicy meatball that was. Something interesting about Kelsey's speech, he spoke about the flowers regarding Nick Sirianni, saying that sometimes they get wrecked, but the roots still remain. I thought that was telling. I agree. Ridiculous. I thought that was. I thought the same exact thing. It was in my notes. I mentioned it on Tuesday morning. I love that he shouted out the flower speech. Todd didn't seem to have full confidence in Nick, says Joseph. Um, I I don't I don't I didn't I didn't get a big vibe on his feel for Nick Sirianni one way or another, but maybe I missed it. Maybe I missed it. Sean Kilrain, uh, Sean Gillespie, sorry. Uh, Pro Football Focus always just throwing that poop against the wall. <laughs> what the? Hey, how you doing? Nice to see you, Zig. Love it. Oh, thank you, Zig. Very kind. Appreciate you. Oh, that's very nice of you, Zig. Much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, ooh, pork roll, pretty solid. April, I'll uh, I'll take a pork roll, egg and cheese any day. Pork roll, I do enjoy pork roll. My thing is, if I have pork roll, like whatever it is, maybe this is just maybe I'm just a fat bastard, but if I have a pork roll, egg and cheese, I need a second pork roll, egg and cheese. Like, I can't just have one pork roll, egg, and cheese. Usually, because if I'm having pork roll, I'm having it on, a on like, an Eng English muffin. You know? I'll need two pork roll, egg, and cheese sandwiches. But if I have scrapple, egg, and cheese, even if it's not on the everything bagel, I will just have one. That's my only thing. And then I'm eating more bread, and we don't need that. You know what I mean? Uh, loose sky, sky lifter. So, as far as the, I didn't. I don't know if you've seen it, but Debo's comment warmed my heart. Seeing the Red Cowboys sulk and defeat warms my cold Philadelphia heart. What did Debo say now? Something different? Something new? Um, please tell me it was a shot at Jason Kelsey because that would be that'd be funsies. Uh, wait, how does Google work? Here we go. Debo Samuel. 
Uh, let me hit news, see if anything. Oh, 22 hours ago? Oh, yeah, okay. Heartbreak? Oh, just being, being the fact that he's got he's heartbroken? Did he say anything about Philly? Just so heartbreaking to lose the Super Bowl. Second time in the last five. Oh, second time in the last five years. Other players be able to put their hands in the knowledge of the crap. Uh, it's kind of hard because basically our job is football. So it's like, all right, let's use this as motivation where you get back in the lab just to put yourself in a position and try to do your best to get back, Samuel said. People just say there's always next year, but I heard that in 2019, and it took four more years uh, to get where we're at. So it's not that easy, as people think, to get to the Super Bowl. It takes everything. It takes me, the coaches, the people upstairs. You bring people in to help for everything to play out right. You're just not going to snap your hands, fingers, uh, and be back in the Super Bowl again. I don't want Chris Sims popping up on my screen. Get out of there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, people. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, I, I did not see that, Luke Skylifter. But yes, I am happy too. If any 49ers fan is sad, that means that I'm happy. It means that I'm happy. Thanks, everybody, in the chat. You guys are wonderful, as per usual. Make sure you guys smash the like button on YouTube. Make sure you guys subscribe to the Farzee Show on the Far Farzee Show YouTube channel and Jacob Media YouTube channel as well. Appreciate you guys. My thanks to Todd Harriman uh, for uh, joining the show. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. We're going to have to replay some of that stuff with Todd uh, for tomorrow's program as well. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. You guys are just wonderful, as per usual. Shout out to the Flyers. Getting a conditional first round pick. Love to see that. Danny Briere making deals. One in trade trade deadline tomorrow for the NHL. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. You guys are great. As per usual, this is the Farzy Show brought to you by MyBookie, mybookie.ag. Catch you guys tomorrow. Same time, same place. See you guys then.